The Florida Keys. They've changed a lot over the years. A booming population has brought modernization and urban sprawl island style. But one island in this chain has stayed much the same. Pigeon Key is being restored and preserved for posterity. About the turn of the century, this tiny five-acre island was an important waypoint in the construction of what was then called the eighth wonder of the world, the Overseas Railroad. If Flagler hadn't decided to build this seven-mile bridge and a railroad back in the early 1900s, it'd probably still be sitting here as a, as a rock sticking out of the, what is it, the confluence of the Gulf of Mexico and Atlantic Ocean. It Dave Whitney is executive director of the Pigeon Key Foundation. Foundation. But it had no significant importance, except it was just far enough down the bridge to put a construction camp. And they had 400 and some people living here. But then after they got the bridge done, they needed people to operate the bridge, and they needed people to paint the bridge and maintain it. And this became the village where they lived and, and took care of the bridge. Derailed by a hurricane in the early 30s, the train service was replaced by traffic and Pigeon Key, bypassed entirely by a new highway bridge built in the 80s, fell into obscurity. But today, thanks to the Pigeon Key Foundation, the island has a new lease on life as a national historic site. All the buildings are being faithfully restored to their original condition, and closed to the public for years, it is now open to all. They can either take a tour, they can, if they're signed up for a course, they can go diving and all that, or they can just bring a picnic basket and sit under the tree and enjoy it. Pigeon Key is not only a repository of Florida history, it's making history in the form of scientific discovery. Using the island as a base, moat marine scientists are also in the race to preserve our coral reefs. Not only essential habitat for marine life, the coral in the Keys is an essential element in Florida's economic life bringing thousands of divers and millions of dollars into our economy. Dr. Eric Mueller of Moat Marine is among those trying to unlock the secrets of the coral reefs. As is the case with any patient, tissue samples must be taken. Using a pneumatic drill, Dr. Mueller bores a series of cores into the coral and carefully extracts each specimen. Okay, these are colony C, and the first set was colony A. They're brought to the surface where scientist Lori McLaughlin quickly immerses them again in salt water. For Lori, this is a special assignment. The kind of work that Eric's working on is going to benefit restoration, which is the restoring areas that have been damaged by, say, vessel groundings, um, other impacts, primarily human impacts. And so this is very significant research that we can use it hopefully to cultivate corals and then take them back and transplant them in these areas where they've been removed by some impact. After hours of drilling, the cores of coral are rushed back to Pigeon Key and Dr. Mueller's unique coral nursery, where he's trying to identify the reef's environmental enemies. We have to, number one, know what the problem was. Number two, we have to know that that problem has been eliminated, at least that acute problem. If we have corals just dying for some reason that we don't know, it would be a waste of time for me to be putting corals back there where they may succumb to this unknown. But once we do begin to take care of those problems, then we could start restoring other areas. Pigeon Key is not only an outpost for veteran scientists, future scientists are welcome here too. Both Moat and Pigeon Key conduct camps here, and children come from across the state and throughout the country to attend. It's hard to imagine a more peaceful, yet exciting campsite for kids. And for college interns like Cheryl Bass, none more inspiring. It's wonderful because I uh, have a double major in marine biology and psychology, so it's a great experience for me. I'm learning a lot from the kids. Thanks. Okay. Did you have fun? Yep. Great. Okay. <laughs> Do you know what it's called? Sea urchin. And what's special about the sea urchin? It's protection. Yeah. That's true. It's got a real neat protective system. All of these spines, there's some that are real dangerous. This one isn't real dangerous, unless, of course, you step on it barefooted. <laughs> Dr. Dan Gallagher is in charge of the camp program. We're trying to get them in touch with the environment, in touch with the world. 
you know, a lot of them are, are city children, suburban children who go outdoors uh, twice a year. <laughs> they come here and they live here for three days and they don't forget it. It's really an unforgettable experience. Pigeon Key is a very special place. It's, it was, fell into a crack in time in a way. And that's why these island, this island and the buildings you see around here today are, are just something that's got to be preserved. And we are preserving it. And not only that, we're using it. This is working on being a world-class education center. In addition to all the activities on and around Pigeon Key, neighboring keys provide fascinating field trips. For instance, the Dolphin Research Center. It's a regular stop. Pigeon Key, rich in history, and with every young camper, creating a new legacy.